Hey Summoners, welcome to another episode of Pro Guides Counter Picks. No matter what the meta is, you can't always get a hold of the strongest champions available. And that's why it's important to have a few practiced counter picks to whatever champions are running rampant in solo queue. Also, if you're looking for a place to keep up with general meta changes, or you just want to meme about your solo queue games, why not join the Pro Guides League of Legends Discord? We'll be sharing all our YouTube uploads so you'll never miss a beat, while providing a space for League players of all types. Check out the link in the description below. Before we get started, our question of the day is, what's one matchup you love to take if your opponent picks before you? Let us know your answer down in the comments. For me, it's Zyra and Tom Kench. I can keep him shoved under his turret for all of laning phase, and Zyra's shove and poke playstyle makes his kit pretty much useless, leaving his ADC to 1v2. Now, without further delay, let's get right into it. Countering everything and singed. In our previous video, we've already talked about how to deal with Darius, so instead of focusing on just him, we're going to talk about a new strategy that's emerging. Tank Fiddlesticks in the top lane has become an OP pick that counters practically everything that gets played top. If the enemy is a ranged champ with harass, Fiddle's W, Bountiful Harvest, gives you sustain to shrug it off. If your opponent is a melee champ looking to all in, your trading pattern is simple. You cast your Q, Terrify, to fear them, and reposition yourself in the middle of your opponent's minions before casting W to outheal their damage while chunking them out. Start with Adoran's Ring. Your build will depend on who you're laning against. If against an AD opponent, your build should look like this. Kindle Gem, Frozen Heart, Ninja Tabby, Spirit Visage, Zanya's Hourglass, Leandru's Torment. If against an AP opponent, your build should look like this. Spirit Visage, Ninja Tabby or Merc Treads, Frozen Heart, Zanya's Hourglass, and Leandru's Torment. The last slot is situational and up for you to decide. Now that you have a quick rundown on why he's OP, here are some tips to make Fiddlesticks work for you in any matchup. Max your abilities in the following order. R, W, Q, E. W max ensures that you win all trades, both out damaging and out healing your opponent in any attempt they make at trading on you. Keep in mind, if you complete your W channel or there's nothing left to be harvested, you're refunded 60% of the cooldown and can use W again much quicker. You want to neutralize your opponent and avoid being killed with the help of Aftershock and the sustain you get from minion waves. Your main goal is to maintain the wave in front of your tower and poke at the enemy laner with your E, Reap, until they walk close enough for you to Q and W them while standing in their wave. Once you bully them out of lane, quickly shove in the wave with W and take a free plate thanks to Demolish before resetting and matching your opponent's tempo. Outside of lane, your game plan is to play around vision and look to engage fights, fearing priority targets and acting as both a tank and damage threat for your team. While Fiddle can counterplay pretty much anything top, what if he's banned and the enemy team takes Singed? Time to lock in Kennen. Your ranged harass forces Singed to want to engage on you for a trade, and when he does, you'll know it's coming. He'll lead with his W and run straight at you, at which point you auto attack, throw a Q, Thundering Shuriken, and follow up with a W, Electrical Surge, to instantly proc Phase Rush. From here, you want to either kite back defensively or kite slightly forward to land additional damage if Singed is running away. You want to use your range advantage and strong disengage tools to punish Singed for every attempt at farming the wave. Eventually, you'll build up a farm lead over him and shove him out of lane. When you do, look to take a plate if possible and reset to match him. Depending on the team comps for each side, you'll have two options for your build. An attack speed build for split pushing, or an AP team fighting build. For split pushing, build Blade of the Ruined King, Berserker Greaves, Nasher's Tooth, Wit's End, Gwinsu's Rage Blade. For a strong AP team fighting build, grab Proto Belt, Sorcerer's Shoes, Zanya's, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff. Kennen has an easy time in this matchup when played correctly, so use these tips to make sure you keep your lead. Focus on managing the wave and harassing him when Singe tries to farm. Your goal is to poke him out, build a lead, and extend that lead by either winning the split push game or heavily impacting teamfights. Don't use your E unless you have to for an escape. Countering Olaf and Hecarim. Huge disclaimer for counters when it comes to jungle matchups. Jungle is all about lane priority, but for the sake of this video, we're assuming the fight takes place in a space uninfluenced by any laners. While Olaf's dueling against melee champions is pretty strong, he struggles when it comes to ranged opponents. This fact and his fast-paced jungle clear make Karthus an excellent choice when it comes to countering the Berserker. When Olaf is running at you or you find him doing a camp, the encounter should always go about the same. You start by using W, Wall of Pain, to slow him, proccing Cheap Shot, and making him an easy target for your Q, Lay Waste. If he runs at you, respond by kiting backwards, and if he retreats, follow him to get in a bit of extra damage. For your build, you want to rush Runic Echoes, and then pick up Sorcerer's Shoes, Morella Namicon, and Leandries. From here, finish out your build with a Void Staff and Rabadon's Death Cap. 
Karthus is a jungler with extremely high carry potential, so here's some tips to make sure you know what you're trying to do. When fighting Olaf, keep distance over him at all times. His vicious strikes will allow him to heal through your damage if you let him get in melee range. Keep an eye on the minimap at all times after 6. If a fight is happening elsewhere on the map, your ult could make a huge difference. To maximize your damage in team fights, don't be afraid to run or even flash into the enemy team to dish out as much damage as possible while in your passive. Remember to ult before the casting window closes. When dealing with a snowballing champ with a huge movement speed increase and a gap closer, you want a champ that can survive his engage and duel him in a more drawn out fight. Kane may have a weak early game, but once you pull off a few ganks and unlock your Rast transformation, you can easily go toe to toe with Hecarim. If Hecarim engages on you, try to hit him with your W Blade's Reach to knock him up as he charges at you. Spam Q Reaping Slash to stack Conqueror and heal as you fight him. Use your ult Umbral Trespass to avoid his ult and you'll win the sustain battle without a problem. If you're the one starting the fight and Hecarim tries to run away, use your ult to follow him, and if he ults away, use your E Shadow Step to chase him through the jungle. Your core build will always consist of Blue Smite with Warrior, Ninja Tabby or Merc Treads, Black Cleaver, Death Stance, and Executioner's Calling. Once you have Rost unlocked, this matchup is pretty easy, and here are some tips to make it even easier to smash Hecarim. Since Hecarim's damage is increased with more movement speed, using Blue Smite on him just before he lands his E on you will result in him doing less damage. Make sure you focus on ganking melee champions early to build up your Rost transformation ASAP, as Hecarim will beat you in any straight up 1v1s before your upgraded form. Countering Vladimir and Annie Vlad has some of the best scaling of any solo laner in the game, so the best way to deal with him is to bully him hard and snuff out his carry potential before he can get rolling. Kled accomplishes this with ease. Any time from level 2 onwards, if Vlad tries to step up to farm, look to dash forward with E, jousting, and land a Q, bear trap on a rope. Even if he uses pool, Vlad will be yanked back and slowed by the second part of your Q if he's in range. Start off with a Tiamat Rush, Merc Treads or Ninja Tabby, and a Hex Drinker. Build into Black Cleaver, pick up Executioner's Calling, and finish with your Maul of Malmortius and Titanic Hydra. The last spot before upgrading Executioner's to Mortal Reminder can go to Death Stance, Guardian Angel, or Ronduin's Omen. This lane is straightforward once you have the basic combo of E then Q down, and these tips will help you bully even harder. If the enemy jungler is AP, you can rush Hex Drinker before Tiamat. The purpose of Tiamat is to give you an easy time shoving in waves, so that when Vladimir realizes he can't even contest the lane, you're able to put him under his turret and look to roam with your ult. Kled's Q applies an upgraded form of Grievous Wounds, reducing healing by 60% if the second part goes off. Press the attack is better against squishier teams, and is stronger for early lane bullying, so feel free to give that a go over Conqueror. Annie is tough to deal with if she snowballs, so taking Malf mid is a good way to ensure that doesn't happen. Thanks to his passive Granite Shield, you're able to win trades as Malphite simply by firing a Q, Seismic Shard, every time Annie walks up to combo you. Once you have your ult, Unstoppable Force, you outrange her and anytime she walks up to do anything after you have one completed item, you can freely engage for an all-in. Always start lane with a corrupting potion. You can then build down one of two paths. The AP build is better for taking out priority targets and consists of Luden's Echo and Sorcerer's Shoes as the core, with the other items depending on the game. Rabadon's, Morella Namicon, Void Staff, Zanya's, and Banshee's Veil are all possible options. For a tankier build, for engaging more drawn-out fights, you want Abyssal Mask, Merc Treads, Sunfire Cape, and then some situational items such as Frozen Heart, Gargoyle Stone Plate, Thorn Mail, or Adaptive Helm. Malphite is mechanically super easy, but make sure to keep these tips in mind so you don't let Annie get the upper hand. Try to avoid trades from her until your Mana Flow Band and Passive Shield are both up early game. Anytime you have ult, you should call your jungler to gank the lane since you have practically guaranteed kill setup. If Annie concedes the lane, just push the wave and look to roam with your ult. Countering Ezreal and Vayne Similar to jungle, there's another huge disclaimer when it comes to ADC matchups. ADCs will never just run at each other and fight in a 1v1. The point of these ADC counterpicks is to find opportunities to outpush and neutralize the enemy ADC's game plan. A lot of ADC matchups are heavily influenced by the supports, since supports dictate the pace of bottom lane. Ezreal, like Vlad before, has a pretty hard time dealing with lane bullies, so Varus is the best choice for shutting him out of the game. Anytime Ezreal moves up, look to trade with Ezreal by autoing him and proccing your Blight stacks with either Q, Piercing Arrow, or E, Hail of Arrows. With Lethal Tempo, your core build will always be Blade of the Ruined King, 
Berserker's Greaves, and Gwinsu's Rage Blade. If your team needs more magic damage, you can branch out to Nasher's Tooth or Wit's End. Otherwise, continue with Runan's Hurricane and Infinity Edge for more physical damage. Here are a few notes for this lane. The point of this lane is to have pressure on the Ezreal early and outscale his DPS in mid and late game. Avoid poke wars with Ezreal when you're building on hit Varus. Once his shift is down, immediately pull the trigger with your ult, Chain of Corruption. Depending on the comps, especially if neither team has much engage, you can look into Arcane Comet slash Lethality Varus. In this case, your playstyle changes to poke over auto trading in lane. Lethality Varus shines when the enemy is mostly squishy targets. Another bully versus scaling lane. To shut down Vayne, Lucian wants to look to use Q, Piercing Light, to harass her while she attempts to farm. If she ever oversteps, your combo to punish is Auto Attack, E, Auto Attack for passive to instantly proc press the attack, Q, and another passive auto attack. Your build should start with Blade of the Ruined King for a strong first item that gives both sustain and all-in potential. Then pick up Berserker Greaves, Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, and Phantom Dancer. A couple of quick points on this one. You need to heavily abuse Vayne to slow her down from reaching her powerful mid or late game. Avoid dashing near walls, as Vayne can win an all-in if she lands a stun with Condemn. Countering Leona and Alistair. Disclaimer for supports, these counters are not implying you'll be dueling 1v1 at the Baron Pit. Instead, it's all about small things in lane phase that allow you to leverage more pressure than your counterpart. To beat a bully like Leona, you need to be able to harass her down while being able to avoid her engage. Janna is capable of both of these things. Your goal in lane is to take control of the middle bush and whittle down Leona with autos and your W, Zephyr. If Leona ever looks to engage with her E, you want to immediately use your Q, Howling Gale, to stop her in her tracks. You want to buy Spell Thief's Edge for more damage and gold when you hit Leona. Pick up Boots of Swiftness for getting around the map and avoiding skill shots, and then build into Ardent Sensor and Redemption. Round out your build with situational support items like Shirelia's Reverie, Mikhail's Crucible, Athene's Unholy Grail, or Locket of the Iron Solari, and always keep space for control wards. Janna is considered easy to play, but here's some tips to keep you from seeing a gray screen. Play aggressively early to chip away at Leona's HP, while avoiding the enemy ADC to build a health advantage bot lane. Tone back your aggression once Leona is 6, since your Q is no longer enough to stop or engage. Once you reach teamfights, your Q and ult Monsoon should be used to peel your back line. Much like the previous matchup, your goal here is to use Thresh's range to poke down Alistair, while using your E, Flay, to prevent any potential engages from Alistair's combo. If he does try to go in on you, simply Flay him back and either kite him or chase him down with a couple of auto attacks. Start off with Steel Shoulder Guards, Rush Boots of Mobility, and make your first completed item Zeke's Convergence. Add to your tankiness and CDR with items like Knight's Vow, Gargoyle Stoneplate, and Redemption. Keep a slot for control wards all game. A few notes for our last matchup of this video. Remember, your goal in lane is to whittle Alistair down. If you land Q, Death Sentence, while he's healthy, never take it into him. Instead, use it as a chance for your ADC to land a free auto attack and be ready to flay him away if he tries to retaliate with a combo. If Alistair bypasses your flay by flash comboing your ADC, you have two options, depending on lane positioning. If you're closer to your turret, you can throw your W, Dark Passage, to pull your ADC to safety. If you're more in the middle of the lane, you can run at the opposing ADC and attempt to lock them out with your own CC to buy your carry time to escape. That concludes our latest episode of Pro Guides Counter Picks. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye out on our YouTube channel, where we're constantly uploading new content just like this. Good luck out there on the Rift, everyone, and we'll see you all next time.